Hello everyone and welcome back to another guide for Botania. Now, this is the second part to the guide. If you need a link for the first part, I will put it up in the corner, up in the top left corner. Now, in the first part, we went over how to create the flowers, create a pure daisy, make living rock and living wood, mana power, creating mana from these mana flowers, and a more complicated mana creator, such as these hydrangeas. Now, we ended off by going, by introducing this, the mana pool. Now we end off by mentioning this, the mana pool. Now we shall use, see what the mana pool is used for. Now. I have a list of here of the four basic things you would probably be using the mana pool for. It can turn grass into pasture seeds, iron into mana steel, diamonds into mana diamonds, and ender pearls into mana pearls. Now, mana steel, mana diamonds, and mana pearls don't give them any special properties, such as you can't throw mana pearls. Now we just toss it over there. But these are used a lot in the crafting of items and other materials for Botania. Now, first thing I'm going to go over is pasture seeds. And these are used to create floating islands. Not big ones, just small little one block size ones. But let's go over them now. First thing you need to create a floating island is a, shim or is a glimmering white flower. To create it you need two glowstone and any kinds of the basic flowers or the basic color flowers that you can see over here. Ooh, sheep spawned. So after you have the glimmering flowers you can create a floating island by putting the glimmering flower, the pasture seed, and a block of dirt flushed to the left side as you can see here in a crafting table. This is a shaped recipe so it has to be in this order on this side. Why? I don't know. And that will create this, a floating island. Now one cool thing about both these flowers whoop, wrong button, is they are used as light sources. So as you can see here monsters can't spawn in this area. And that's all because of the floating flower, of the glimmering flower and the floating one. So if you want a more natural way of lighting up some areas, just decorate them with flowers instead of torches. We'll leave this overlay on for a little bit more. Next is creating this, the floating hydrangeas. And that's putting any of the floating flowers and one of the mana creator ones, such as you can see here. Now, these again are not bothered by gravity because they are floating tower or well, floating pieces of flowers I guess you can call them and they just spin here like this but these are still functional as you can see here now I set this up before we can start before we started you can see there is a little mana in there and there is barely any in here now you can stack this I think the limit is four high before the bottom ones actually lose range for the spreader. Now, like I said, these do go 4 high max, but again, that's 16 flowers total, creating mana for just one pool, which, using the hydrangeas and unlimited water sources as you see here, can generate mana pretty quickly. And again, they're creating light around it, so you don't have to worry about lighting these up. Now, let's get rid of this small overlay. There we go. Now, next is the runic altar. Now, the runic altar is used for quite a bit of the more... Actually, slightly more advanced crafting. But also, crafting of these runes. Now, there are quite a few runes, and I have them placed from simplest on the bottom to hardest on the top. Ooh, got lighter out. Now, they go 
Now the bottom tier, there's five of them. You have fire, water, earth, air, and mana. Oh, it's raining. I cannot spell. There we go. That's how you spell. So, yes, we have fire, water, earth, air, and mana are the basic ones you can create using the runic altar. Next, we have spring, summer, autumn, and winter, the four seasons. Now, at the top tier are, there's seven of them, and they're based off the seven deadly sins, which they're used for more advanced crafting, and I shall go over them in a different video. Now, how exactly do we use a runic altar? You can't just place it down and use it. It actually needs mana to power it. So, I placed this creative mana pool and a mana spreader. Now, when you had the mana pool, you have to set to how it, I have it here. That is mana sparing items. That is mana from the pool going to other items. So, going to the mana spreader into the mana altar. Here we have it, items going into it and here. So that will bring them into it. It still works, but if it's the opposite, it will actually start to drain it from items near it. So that's just the difference between the arrows on here. So I have it sparing into here. So now I shall make a rune, uh, what have this, 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 oh, nope, not water. This and this. So, and now to put these in, you don't right, oh, you can right click them in. I thought you had to toss them in. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. So you can right click them in. Oh, I'm in creative, so that's putting more in. Fishing rod, sugar cane, and bone meal. So, once you have all the materials in, you should right click. And I am making a rune of water. Now, if you hover over them with your wand, it actually shows you the progress of it. Now, these do take quite a while to make. Now, one actually interesting, ooh, I forgot about this. Actually, I need a, sorry, I forgot about this. You actually need a piece of living rock to actually create these. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. To create them, you need a piece of living rock and that's for each of the runes. You can't just right click them and they appear. So, this is almost done. Wow, these take longer than I thought, than I remember. So, here we go. Come on, a little more. And, here we go. And now, lightning will come out to show that it's done. You shift. Right up, no, sorry. You just, um. Okay, almost done here. A little more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I thought this would go faster. Okay. And as it's up, it's done. Lightning shooting out. Now you toss a piece of living rock, living rock on it, and you shift right click it. And there you go. Now they give you, for the basic ones, they give you three of them. Next tier, they give you two. And the final tier, they give you one. Yeah. Like I said, when it's done, again, you see the lightning shooting out of it. You just toss a piece of living rock on top, shift, right click, and then you get the runes. Actually, screw that up. Whoops. Oh, well. So that's all for today. Just another short, quick guide. Thank you all for watching. I've been the Gilded Gamer with a another guide to Britannia. Next time, we will... Actually, I'm not really sure what we'll go over next time. Looks like we'll find out. And thank you all for watching. If you enjoy gaming content, please feel free to check out my channel. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to see more. Thank you, and have a good day.